I never saw COVID-19 coming, and I think it applies to everybody. No one saw it coming. Finances, everything went down. Nowhere to go, no work, nothing to do. It was very, very challenging. Me that I'm even struggling to start on my own, that now pandemic is here. Everything just died down because nobody goes out. No occasion, no party, nothing. Before COVID-19, at least the months, I can say, okay, I can make like 150,000. But then that COVID-19, to even get like 30,000 is a problem. Since the pandemic, you know, there is lockdown, total lockdown, everybody has to be at home. The market was dry, very low. It was really, really bad. Really bad as in we are not doing anything and I have to pay salary. At the onset of the COVID pandemic, My World of Bats was one of such companies that was shut down at that time. And when we returned to work post the initial lockdown, we decided that we would try to just do something, put our hands to work. There was no business coming in. There was absolutely nothing to do. Um, we're typically a company who does mass produce conference folders. Obviously, there were no events, and so we went on to produce, start producing face masks in small quantities to distribute to the community, just our way of giving back. Uh, however, after, because we had been in talks with MasterCard Foundation, after some time, they approached us and talked about a resilience fund that they had started for their various partners. As we were in, the, in line to become a partner, they asked us to apply, and so we did, and that's how SafeUp came about, a chance to produce personal protective equipment in larger quantities. In total, everything comes to about 2.575 million items that we're producing for a wider audience. My World of Bags typically does a mixture of leather products uh, through its Femi Handbags luxury line. And because our primary focus was leather, we then needed to retool some of the machines to adapt to fabric production. We also had to purchase more machines and retool the factory in such a way that it accommodated for a fuller fabric focus with a smaller focus on the leather line. We ensure that because our, the product that's going out is required to protect people, so we set up sanitizer stations, we bought different thermometers, we just ensured, and then we ensured that everybody who was coming into the building would be given a mask so that they could wear something and stay safe. And furthermore, in our retooling process, we ensured that there was distancing, efficient distancing between the different machines. We ensure that anybody who is packaging, for example, sanitizes before they start work and sanitizes at different intervals as they are packaging. One of the main initiatives of the project is really about economic empowerment. So we are, we're certainly not doing everything in-house. It's a combination of in-house staff as well as external producers that we hired and contracted to work on the project. We also have implementing partners which are similar, companies similar size to My World of Bag who are working on executing other elements of the project.
I'm a fashion designer. I run Cute Cut Fashion. We are a staff strength of about 100, and we also have about machines about 70. Now, in 2020, COVID came in, and uh, we were not having customers coming in. Everybody was trying to stay back at home, no parties. You know, this business is a social, where it's a social dependent business. So when the social world is not actually active, definitely it affects us. So that actually affected us. And the impact was so great on us, we had to downsize in terms of salary to 60-40. But by September, we became an implementing partner with Project Save Up. And um, a lot of good things began to unfold for us. The first thing was that we were able to start paying salary back up 100%. Well, we were able to be back into business to now stabilize financially. So it's been interesting to know that the PPE the medical PPE for Save Up has actually helped us out a lot. And um, I've come to realize that the empowerment aspect of this project is what is actually um, the strength for the people who have benefited for it. Promo Print has been in business for over 20 years. Our quality control is very good. Our production capacity is very high. We have a lot of machines. We have different kinds of machines that can do from small numbers to huge numbers. As an implementing partner with SafeUp, what we did, what our part of the role was, was to produce uh, doctor's uh, scrubs, patient's robes, uh, shoe covers, uh, hair covers, and anything that would enable uh, protection of our medical personnel and patients in Nigeria to help with COVID. This intervention actually was very, very essential because number one, it enabled uh, a lot of us struggling um, companies, big and small, to be able to produce and keep going right through the COVID pandemic. And we're still doing that. It also opened new vistas for us because all of us have now learned how to do medical uh, paraphernalia, which we can continue to do even after the pandemic. And also we, a lot of people have been helped along the line. And most importantly, this stuff has been given to the medical personnel and patients who didn't have as much as they should have had. And um, it has been of immense help. So thank you, Safe Up. Sourcing for the remote producers was one of the most interesting parts of the project. One of the key objectives of Project SafeUp is really about resilience. Considering that we, were, we have been in the middle of a pandemic, one of the things we wanted to do was ease the impact and the effects of the pandemic on these individuals. So we prioritized individuals who had specifically been hard hit by the pandemic. We also looked at individuals who were breadwinners who now could not provide for their families. And we looked for individuals who did have the skill and experience to produce in certain capacities. So we gave as many people an opportunity to be a part of the selection process. They would submit their samples and then we would select based on all the other, other different criteria as well as the quality of their work. And furthermore, because we realized that gender equality is a key focus of the MasterCard and of My World of Bags ethos, we decided that we would ensure that a greater majority of the individuals we were hiring were women. So we have about 90% women working as our remote producers, and even in-house, we also have a, a large number. My name is Tao Falayo. Uh, I'm a tailor. I do ladies' clothes, both native and English dress. I'm Oni Tokpe Anike. I'm into brighter wears, children wear, and also I make bags. I'm Akewomi Messi Tomike. I sew ready to wear because that is majorly what I learn. Um, my name is Ibiemi Obasa Uterayo. I make wedding gowns and I also make normal native wears and office dresses. For Project Save Up, we produce face mask, which is non-medical, and we did head cap and gown, which is ongoing right now. You can see them doing the arrangement. I joined Project Save Up since November 2020. Business has been good, but at the same time, it has been challenging. 
in the heat of COVID-19 pandemic, the business really went down. Because if I could remember, we were making for like 40,000 before the COVID started. In the heat of the COVID, we were getting 5,000, less than 4,000, 5,000 during the COVID. And when we started the project Save Up, we were able to get 200,000 per month. So since, since the time we started, we've been able to save up some money for acquiring a bigger space now that we are here. We were using a smaller shop, and in between, we were able to get 10 machines more, making 16 now. So it has really added a lot of advantages to me. If I flash back, I know I'm not, I, I'm not where I used to be. I'm a graduate, but things were not that rosy. If it were in this, I am sure by now I wouldn't have a shop because on a good day, sewing, you only get maybe a customer bring you a clothing once in a week or once in two weeks. But this is like every two, two weeks. You already know what you are getting. And you, you have planned for what you are getting. Okay, this is what I want to do with this next money that is, money that is coming into my account. I want to buy this, I want to buy this. So starting this project, there are days I don't sleep. The project is very, very demanding, time consuming. You have to have the energy to, to do this. Most of the time I'm working. Even at home, I'm working. I learned teamwork. Uh, I learned division of neighbor. Then I learned that you can handle projects if you believe in yourself, in your ability. Considering the volume, if I, I was told that I would be able to produce about 60,000, no mask. I said, are they kidding or something? But I was able to work, we were able to work as a team because I have to employ more hands. The first material that was given to me was 1,000 pieces. So I made the 1,000 pieces they don't. But it was after that that I discovered that no, I have to get tailors around me that we can work together. That is not something I can just say that, okay, I want to do it alone. So I have to get some people around that, okay, tell us that, come on, this is a project that I'm doing and I want you to work with me and it's going to fetch you money. In all, we make like 50,000 nose marks, 12,000 head cap and the shoe cover like 15,000 shoe cover. And what I've already also learned is that it's made me to before the project, I used to look at some people that, okay, they are okay. It's made me to learn that people are really suffering. So I see this project as a lifesaver for people, that it helped their standard of living. The pandemic has really affected some, a lot of things, but this project really makes people to be comfortable to some extent. So in total, uh, I would estimate that we have about 50 to 70 remote producers working from their homes or from smaller factories. When we hand them these materials, they go off and produce it. Sometimes they'll uh, get the services of additional, smaller, even smaller machinists and tailors, and then they bring that in. And we then have to do a great deal of quality control to ensure that the standard is consistent with what we're producing in-house and consistent across all the different remote producers that we have engaged. First and first, we keep our environment very clean. We check the quality of the face masks to know if it's effectively sewn, because we check the elastic, we check if the stitches are well sewn, and the face shield, we sanitize it before it's been packaged for use. Now this is the face mask now. We are checking it and we found a fault in it because the elastic was not properly placed in the Max. So we are, and we have also this, the head cap also was not properly sewn. This will be returned to our remote dealer so that he can adjust it. Why it's very important is because we are able to save, save lives. We know that for them to be guarded, we need this face shield, the face marks and the head cap so that to be able to guard themselves effectively. To 
today I'm here to deliver 15,000 pieces of nose cover. I had about project save up through my sister and I joined the team November 2020. I'd like to employ one or two tailors to join me that I'm paying. The first project I took there was like, when they started checking, I was like, hey, I don't know this thing is, this is the way they will be checking everything. Like the company needs something, they, they need the neatest something, they want the best from us. So when they started checking, I was, at first I was shaking, though I knew what I did, it was okay. And we've been working well with together. So I learned that and I'm so happy I learned it. Because whatever you are doing, you need to do it well. For the in-house workers, the criteria, the selection criteria was a bit different. We're remote workers, we knew we were going to be giving a greater responsibility. In-house, we were really, really passionate about training and upskilling individuals. So we looked at people who were looking for some sort of experience in production or who were in school. And we, we specifically focused on youth-aged individuals, young people who were looking for an opportunity to just learn a trade or improve their skills in a certain aspect of the uh, manufacturing, fashion production and manufacturing line uh, so that we could actually make an impact on their skill levels and hopefully ensure that they go off and do, do something with what they had learned on the project. I am a fashion designer and also I used to be a teacher. I heard about Project Save Up through a friend and I decided to join because it's still along the line of what I do and of course to earn money. I was tired of sitting at home doing nothing. I have worked in different sessions of the project. The fun part of the work for me is the competitive part. Everybody wants to meet up the targets. Everybody, you know, I want to do 1,000. Even some people want to do more than 1,000. As a fashion designer now, maybe because uh, before, I would just let me relax, let me sew a cloth. But now, working here, I know my capacity can sew more than two clothes in a day. I've learned how to manage time, you know, how to do things very fast. You know, when you have to meet up with targets, you know, we are dealing with time. Within the space of maybe an hour, you have to do this, how to do things in a more presentable way, and how to package, you know, how to package things in a way that will stand out from others. Before joining Project Save Up, I actually don't work because I'm actually a student. So joining Project Save Up is actually good because I've learned a lot of things like using the machine to cut forms, scrubs, nose marks, head cover, leg cover as a cutter. We can't actually afford to make any mistake. Before I joined Project Save Up, I was learning fashion design. COVID-19 really affected me then because everything was tight and I heard about Project Save Up. A friend of mine told me about it. After the project, I want to go out there, have my own shop, buy some machines because the project has really helped me a lot. By working here, I've learned being consistent with what I'm doing, you know, being serious with it, and doing it perfectly. Then I can just sew and nobody's monitoring me. But yeah, I feel that people are going to use this and it's going for protecting. Yes, it is a tiring work, but I love doing it. Not just because it's going to, I'm going to hang, but because I am saving a life out there. And not just sewing, everybody can sew, but you coming in the morning and hitting your target, sewing about 200 to 300 nose marks or head caps in a particular time is the deal. So one of the greatest learnings from this project has really been the people. I believe, especially with the people we have brought in-house, the young, different young people from all walks of life that we brought in to work at Project Safe Hub, I believe the main learning has been how opportunity transforms how people experience 
life. Opportunity, access to employment, access to income has really been, it's, it's evident the transformative impact it has had. And to all of us at My World of Bags who had been working here and who also got a lifeline from MasterCard Foundation through Project Safe Up, I think it's, it has been a shift in perspective for all of us inside and many of those who we've worked with, a shift in perspective in how to do things to a great quality standard and in how to transform people's lives and ensure that impact is at the heart of everything that we do. Mm -hmm.